So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the key jargon that surrounds financial markets. We're going to ask the question, what are financial markets? Uh, how are they different to capital markets? Uh, and really, what's the point? Uh, who uses them? And who are the key players or institutions that you come across? Right, so financial markets. Uh, why do they exist? And what's the point? Essentially, if we put financial markets in the middle, the first question we could ask is, what do we mean by financial markets? Who's in that box? Uh, well, the term conceals a whole load of organisations, banks, building societies, and so on. So within this box, you have names such as HSBC, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and a whole raft of other financial institutions, many of which work in the City of London, uh, but also capital centres around the world. So, what's the purpose? What are they all doing? Well, if we put one of them in, banks, their objective is very simple, to make money. That's it, really. So, their objective is to simply make a profit. The more of it they make, the happier they are. But how? OK, as part of the financial markets, they form a vital role. They bring together two groups of people. Investors, or lenders. Now that just means people who have money and are prepared to either lend it or invest it for a fixed period normally. And on the other side, you've got borrowers. These are people looking for capital. And to be honest, there are two big groups of them. You've got governments, so you've got the UK government, and also companies looking to borrow money. So for example, if EasyJet decides it wants to expand its fleet of aircraft, it's got to get the money from somewhere. Either it's made past profits, great, so no need to go anywhere near financial markets, or maybe it needs to borrow. So companies and governments are big sources of uh, borrowing in the financial markets. And banks, as part of this group in the middle, bring them together and try and make some money. Because as a borrower, you are going to pay a cost. Now that cost is often interest. Okay, um, So to take money out of the markets, you'll have to pay some kind of return. Um, or perhaps what you're doing as a company is selling investors' shares, in which case you'll be paying dividends. But on this side of the equation, there's always some kind of cost. Interest or dividends being the typical examples. Over here, a return. As an investor, I don't give my money away for free. That would be ridiculous. So I expect something back. How do banks make a profit? Well, the answer is quite simple in a way. If you can basically get away with charging these people a lot to set up a loan as a borrower and give away less of that to these people looking for a return, you can skim off a profit. And that's traditionally the way conventional retail banks make money. They basically take money away from investors and then hope to charge more to give it out to borrowers. And the difference is a margin or a profit. So in broad terms, financial markets simply exist to bring together two groups of people, investors and borrowers, and the people in the middle, banks being a prime example, exist simply to make money. Okay, so what are financial markets? If we step away from banks for a moment, what does this term actually mean? And how many different ways of investing are there? Okay, some more jargon coming up. So let's uh, go back to this idea of financial markets.
and introduce a few more bits of terminology. So you can break financial markets down, leaving aside the individual institutions for a moment, so the banks and building societies, uh, you can break them down into what are known as money markets. Now money markets is a general term uh, for a place where short term investment deals are done. So governments, for example, and companies need to borrow short term and they pay an appropriate interest rate or return for that. So we talk about money market instruments. And um, there are organisations in the financial markets, investment banks that specialise in organising this side of the financial markets. Longer term, you get capital markets involved. In other words, if money markets deal, roughly speaking, with time periods of up to about 12 months, when companies and governments want to, say, borrow longer term, they'll tap into the capital markets. And you can break capital markets down a little bit further. There are two broad types. You've got the equity markets. That's where companies, for example, sell shares to investors, hoping to raise capital, so they bring in new owners. And you've got the debt markets. So as an alternative, a company might choose to borrow money, and the capital markets can be an easy place to facilitate that. They're not borrowing for three months, they're borrowing for 10 years, let's say. And two more bits of jargon. When companies issue big blocks of equity, so think of EasyJet trying to fund some new Boeing aircraft, that's a long-term investment. You're not going to borrow three months' worth of money. You're going to want the money for five or ten years or more. So two ways of doing it. I either bring in new owners. That's called selling shares in my business. Um, or I go to the capital markets via an investment bank and I look to raise debt in the form of bonds. Now, bond is a phrase that puts some people off. It just means tradable debt. So if I raise 100 million by issuing new shares, fine. As a company, I bring in new owners. They'll want some kind of return. So maybe I'll have to start paying them dividends. Um, or I could approach investment banks for debt instead. This means I'm bringing in borrowers effectively. I'm trying to raise capital. And to make it as easy as possible for my investors, I can make that debt tradable. So I could take 100 million worth and chop it into 100 million one pound blocks, for example. And those can then be sold on and traded by investors. So, in summary, financial markets exist to facilitate lending or investing and borrowing. The organisations in the middle take out a profit and you can split them down into short-term activity, money markets, and longer-term activity, capital markets. And in here lurk two very important parts of the financial markets, the equity and debt markets.